All right, welcome to 2.5 part one. This will be equations of lines and linear modeling, okay? And so our essential question for today is what are the basic forms of linear equations and, and how do you model data using linear equations? Okay, so we're gonna kind of work with point slope form and slope intercept form of a line and then use that in some word problems at the next part two video to actually model some situations that you can use linear forms for, okay? Linear forms are very, very useful. You use them all the time when modeling data, so this is a very important topic, and you spend a lot of time on it in algebra. And so this should be somewhat review, somewhat familiar, okay? So to start with, it says use the point-slope form uh, given a point and a slope. So write an equation of the line through 3, negative 5 and having a slope of negative 2. So what you would need is point-slope form of a line, okay? And so just a reminder, we'll put on the side here, okay? Point slope form. The equation for that is going to be y minus y1 is equal to m x minus x1, okay? So in this case, m is our slope. And then x1 comma y1 is just any point on the line. Okay, that allows you to build a line given just a slope and then any point on the line. That's the equation that we want to use. Okay, so uh, the y and the x stay the same. It should be pretty familiar. This is the probably the most useful form of a line that you'll use, right? Because you can use this form to get to slope intercept form, uh, which we'll talk about later. Okay, so we're going to use that equation right there to, to do this. So here we have m is negative 2. And we can say our x1, y1 is going to be 3, negative 5. And so we can just throw it into that equation, right? So we can go y minus y1, so negative 5, equals m, negative 2, x minus x1, which is 3. Okay, just plug those things in right to that equation on the side. Simplify, we have y plus 5 equals negative 2x plus 6. Notice I distributed that negative 2 there. Then subtract the 6, and we get y equals negative 2x uh, plus 1, okay? And that would be the equation of a line that goes through 3, negative 5, and has a slope of negative 2, okay? Let's try it again. It says use the point-slope form given two points. Write an equation of the line through points negative 4, 3, and 5, negative 1. Now it wants us to write the result in standard form, right? Standard form is ax plus by equals c, right? So in this case, we were not in standard form, but we could get there quite easily by moving that 2x over, okay? So we're gonna do the same thing, except for the first thing that we don't have that we need to find is that slope, right? To use this equation, we need the slope and one point, and we don't have that slope. So to find slope, all we have to do uh, is use the slope formula, which is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Now, it doesn't really matter which one is x1, y1, which is x2, y2. Um, but this right here is a formula from your past. It's change in y over change in x, right? Or rise over run, you might have heard. So let's go negative 1 minus 3, y2 minus y1, over 5 minus a negative 4, okay? So this is what? Negative 4, 5 plus 4 is 9. So negative 4 ninths is our slope, okay? So now we have our m, and the equation calls for any point on the line. Certainly these are both points on the line, right, if the line goes through this. And so we have y minus, let's use this one, y minus y1 equals m, x minus a negative 4, so x plus 4, okay? Simplify this. Uh, we'd have y minus, y minus 3 equals negative 4 ninths x. Uh, what is that, minus 16 ninths? I'm going to leave it like that. Then we'll go ahead and add 3. So negative 4 over 9, x, uh, what is that, times times 9, um, 27, so plus 27, 11. Okay, let's use the calculator to make sure. But once we have it in this form, we want ax plus by equals c. So all we have to do is move this x term over, let's put this up here, and so we have y uh, positive 4 9 x, plus y equals 11 ninths. So I'm not confident on that 11 ninths. But now we have ax plus by equals c. 
Uh, you can flip around the Y and the X no matter what, because addition is uh, it allows you to be commutative, which, allow, which means that you know one plus two is the same thing as two plus one. And now this is our final answer in standard form. It's a very common way to have your answer presented. Okay, so. Nothing too crazy here. Up here, we were just able to use the formula right away. We had the slope, we had a point. Here, we had to find the slope, but once you have the slope, it's the exact, exact same problem, right? Okay, finding slope and y-intercept from the equation of a line. So we're given the equation of a line in standard form that wants us to find the slope and the y-intercept. So you have a few options. Um, the easiest option is going to be remember that we have slope-intercept form of a line right here. So that was y equals mx plus b, where m was your slope again, and b was your y-intercept, okay? That's the y-value of your y-intercept, okay? That's, that's again from your past, there's two forms of a line here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and get this in that form, right? So to do that, we get y alone, so we have negative 4y equals negative 3x plus 12, then divide by negative 4. So we have, what, 3 fourths x um, minus 3. And now we have it in the form of mx plus b. So our slope is m equals 3 fourths, right, the number before the x. And our y-intercept, which is what it asks for, right, slope and y-intercept, would just be 0 comma negative 3. That is the actual point of the y-intercept. Um, if you just say negative 3, you're technically not right, because that doesn't mean anything. But if you were to graph this, right, you could plot 0, negative 3, and then use a slope to graph this line, OK? So nothing too crazy here, just two equations, two different forms of a line. Um, nothing too terribly challenging, but a little bit of review, OK? All right, part D, use the slope-intercept form. Um, we're going to write equation of a line through these two points, then graph it using slope-intercept form. Okay? And so there's all kinds of ways to do this. Um, here's how I would do it. So, again, I really like uh, point-slope form. And that was uh, y minus y1 equals m x minus x1. And so what I would recommend doing is using this to find the equation of a line, putting it in slope-intercept form from that version, and then graphing it. Okay? And so that's what we'll do. So to start with, we have two points, and just like the previous example, we need to first find our slope. So our slope is going to be 2 minus 4 over 2 minus negative 2, which is negative 2 over 4, which is negative 1 half. Okay? Mm -hmm. I'm likely going to mess up at some point here. So we have a slope of negative 1 half. Now we build our line. So y minus, let's use this one right here. y minus 2 equals negative 1 half x minus 2. Uh, simplify this. So we have negative 1 half x plus 1. And now if you add that 2 over, you actually get slope-intercept form, right? So we get y equals negative 1 half x, 1 plus 2 is plus 3, okay? And this is now in slope-intercept form. This is in point-slope form. This, you could present it like this and it would be correct. But this is actually in slope-intercept form. So we took that use point-slope form and got it in slope-intercept form, okay? Let's go ahead and mark that down, actually. I'm going to write uh, point-slope form, slope intercept form. Okay, just in case you are half paying attention. So from here it's quite easy to graph, right? Our slope is negative one half, as we said, and our y intercept is zero three. So we go ahead and find zero three, it's very small and I'm sorry. So zero three is right here. And then you have negative one half as a slope. So how you use that is this is rise over run, right? So we go down one over two, down one over two, and so on. Down one over two, down one over two, down one over two. Um, lots of teachers say they want three points. I don't, you know, make as many as you want. It goes on forever, right? Go ahead and connect those. You could use a ruler if you care about that kind of thing. A lot of people do. And that would be a decent looking line that would tell us a lot about this. Okay? Uh, you would know, right? The slope's negative, so it should be pointing down. If your picture's pointing up, you did something terribly wrong. Right? That's a very easy, quick check that you can do. But again, nothing too challenging here. Uh, just like before, find that, use that point slope form to find the um, equation of the line. We can morph it into slope intercept form, that works too. And then go ahead and graph it from there. There are a lot of other ways to do this. This is just the way that I would do it. Okay? 
All right, uh, now we're going to work backwards. So we're going to find the equation from the graph. So we have the graph, and we want to use that to find the equation of the line. Okay? So step one, we're going to identify the slope y-intercept and the x-intercept. Okay? So this it shouldn't be too, too crazy, but you have a few different options on how you want to do this. Um, let's go ahead and just just find the things that it says. So m is the slope. Um, we'll notice here we have from neg so we could do rise over run. You could also identify two points, right? You say this right here is negative two zero. This is zero five. Find the slope between that. That would work too. But we could just do rise over run. And so notice it goes up five over what two? So the slope would be five over two. Okay. So either option there works just fine. The y-intercept is just going to be 0, 5. And the x-intercept is negative 2, 0. Now, the x-intercept in this case is not going to be super useful, right? We don't really need to use that for anything, but it's really good information to note, OK? Because if something fails, we have more information. And as the graphs get harder, when they're not just linear, when we have quadratic and cubic and whatnot functions, um, x-intercepts become very, very important. So Remember for a line, we have this equation y equals mx plus b. That's the slope intercept form. And so we can just use that with these things, right? So we have y equals 5 halves, that's m, x, plus the y intercept, so plus 5. And that would be good enough, OK? So that is, that is the equation of the line from here. We identified these things. Mostly the m and the y intercept are the most important, OK? On to the last page of the part one video, we have vertical and horizontal lines. Now, this is something that, like, obviously you could memorize and you may have memorized back in the day, right? But it's something that's going to be the most, like, it's, it's going to be really confusing if you just, if you don't think about it, right? If you just have to memorize, you'll mess it up. But an equation of the vertical line through any point, okay? And so if you're trying to think about this, let me find a piece of paper to write on here. This will work. So think about your plot here and say we're looking at any point right here okay if we want to find the equation of a vertical line through that point we figure out this right that's the vertical line through this okay now think about the things that change now usually an equation depends on the x and the y right but say this was just the point uh, four or five right pretend let's pretend now, no matter where you pick, right? If if I'm here, uh, if I'm here, x is always four, right? That's what it goes through. If I'm here, x is always four. If I'm here, so no matter what, x stays the same, right? So you don't really need. Um, sorry, x is x stays the same. The y changes, right? But if we just write x equals four. No matter what you put in for y, that x stays the same. So if y is 6, x is still 4. If y is 37, x is still 4, no matter what, right? And so whatever stays the same, in this case, the x value, no matter where you look, you end up with the same x value. That is how you can build it, OK? And so you just take the, it's easiest if you just draw a picture. I know it was kind of confusing. But if you think about it as no matter where I put y, x is 4 in this picture. That'll help you just build this equation easiest, OK? So in this case, instead of 4, I don't know why I wrote that, we would want x equals a, right? Because that a value is what's going to be important, OK? Now for the same thing, if we were doing a, a horizontal line like this, right? No matter where I look for x, I could be x is 1, I could be x is negative 3, y is always going to be 5 in this red line, right? No matter what. And, and so that, that's going to build us that equation in this way, right? So no matter what the x is, y is 5. And so we go ahead and write y equals, in this case, it's going to be b. Um, another way I've heard of students memorizing this is that you think of vertical lines like the y-axis. And so you do the opposite of the y-axis, which is x equals. Um, that's, I, I, that's a little bit flawed thinking because the equation of the y-axis is x equals 0. But if that helps you remember that it's the opposite of what your brain would think, that works too, OK? All right, on to parallel and perpendicular lines. This will finish up the uh, video for today. So first off, parallel lines. So we have two, di two distinct non-vertical. The reason that is that the slope of a vertical line is undefined. 
they are parallel if and only if they have the same slope. Okay, lines with the same slope. Remember, slope tells you how how steep something is. If it's the same steepness, they're not going to touch. Okay, so that's the definition of parallel. Now perpendicular. So two lines if they're not vertical, uh, they're perpendicular if and only if slopes have a product of negative one. Okay, the reason that that works um, is I mean you just graph enough and you figure it out. But we end up with that that thing you learned, which was negative reciprocal or opposite reciprocal. I don't know how to spell that word. Reciprocals. I'm not sure I've ever written that word down before. Okay, so that will be perpendicular. If you have a product of negative one, or more likely, you will see this right. If your slope is one, then you find the negative reciprocal, uh, which means you, you you flip it and put a negative sign out front, right? Uh, this should be an old hat, an old trick that you've used a lot. Um, let's go ahead and practice it just for one example, okay? So it says, write an equation in both slope-intercept form and standard form of the line that passes through the point 2, negative 4, and satisfies the given condition, okay? So the given condition is going to give us the slope of the line, and then we can use that slope to find the equation, okay? It does want it in slope-intercept and standard form. We can do that, okay? So here. This line right here, uh, we know that we need the same slope as this line, okay? So to start with, we need to do some work to figure out what the slope of this line is. Now, uh, the easiest way likely is going to be to put it in slope-intercept form, and that's fine. So we get y equals, so 5y equals negative 2x plus 4, divide by 5, and you get negative 2 fifths x plus 4 fifths, which tells us that m is equal to negative 2 fifths, okay? So that's step one. Now we have the slope of the line that we need, right? That's all that the parallel to the line tells us, right? We need to give, have the given condition that it is parallel to this line. Parallel means have the same slope as that line. The slope of that line is negative 2 fifths. Now we can actually do the work, which I'll do in red. So our slope is negative 2 fifths and our point is 2, negative 4. So we go back to using that point slope form. And so we have y minus a y1 equals m x minus x1. Go ahead and solve it, or you know, get this in, in slope intercept form. So we're going to distribute and add the 4 over, or subtract the 4 over, I guess. Uh, plus 4 fifths. So y equals negative 2 fifths x, uh, 4 fifths minus 4. So 4 is 20 fifths. Yeah, so we're going to subtract some negative 16 over 5. Again, this is where I mess things up, right? So this one right here is answer number one, that's slope-intercept form, right? Our slope is negative 2 fifths, our intercept is negative 16 fifths. And then just add over the 2 fifths x. And now we also have standard form, okay? So there's the two answers that they're asking for. Um, this part right here was only to give us our slope. And this is gonna be the same thing down here, okay? So for part B, um, I'm gonna put a little squiggle here, just for my my happiness. Okay, we it's the same equation, right? So we do the same work, and we end up with y equals a negative two fifths x plus four fifths. So in this case, it's perpendicular, right? So we want to flip it and put a negative. And so the the slope that we want is going to be flipped and negative, so it's going to be five halves. So that is positive. Okay, that is the negative reciprocal of negative two fifths. If you check. Take five halves times negative two fifths, you should get negative one. Okay, so we have our slope, we have our line or point. We do the exact same work. So we have y minus I don't know what I'm doing over here. Y minus a negative four equals m x minus two, um, and so we get y equals five halves x. What is that? Minus five. Minus five. Mi so minus nine. I might have messed that up. So there's in slope-intercept form, and then in standard form to subtract that over, so we get negative 5 halves x plus y equals a negative 9. Okay. Uh, switching between these two forms should be incredibly easy for you. There's a reason it doesn't say point-slope form, right, is that going from here to point-slope form is not that easy, um, but going from point-slope form to either of these is, is super easy, so nothing crazy there. Uh, and that'll end the first video. There's another video tomorrow on the second section of this, but that'll be the end of 2.5 part one.